It's June the 6th, and as I'm not feeling well this morning, I decided that I would take this time to do a further experiment in the series of uh, that there are some things that cannot be said in 280 characters. So what I'm going to do this morning, excuse me, is that I'm going to read my article on taxation. It's gone through a few revisions over the years, but it's on my website now. And it's called A Financial Toll Tax. Transform, not reform, the tax system. These are 1,536 words and 7,912 characters. But I recently awoke from a rather pleasant dream in which members of Congress and the President embraced the unique proposition that they had been elected to serve the people of the United States. Congress had determined that health care was a matter of right by simply reducing the age at which a person qualified to birth, and that every child should have free access to a college education. Now, this is what we talked about yesterday when we, we imagine or we, we, we shared a vision of how the world could be if the people were to make policy and to form their own government. So, back to the article. Having thus dedicated the fortunes of the nation to the future of its children, the members of Congress conservatives, liberals, and independents alike collaborated on how to best pay for these commitments and to reform the income tax system. In their wisdom, they decided to transform the taxation. Here's the problem. Presently, one quarter of all large U.S. corporations, two-thirds of all all small corporations and most foreign companies doing business in the United States pay no federal income tax at all, even though they book trillions of dollars in receipts every year and take advantage of America's courts and infrastructure to make their profits. A simple system of collecting a tiny financial toll tax on the movement of all money in the economy would effectively transfer the burden of taxation from workers and small business owners to the wealthy, large corporations and financial institutions. Estimated tax revenues for the 2018 fiscal year are $3.6 trillion, most of which will be paid by ordinary taxpayers. Income taxes are $1.8 trillion. Social Security contributions are $878 billion. Medicare payments equal $268 billion. And $58 billion are withheld for unemployment insurance. Now, that's what we pay into the system. Customs and import tariffs will amount to $144 billion while corporations will only pay $478 billion. Individual income taxes and payroll taxes presently account for four out of every five federal revenue dollars. In other words, we, the people, are being taxed severely and, and, and without real redress if, if you are, are, are challenged on your withholding. Even with all of this revenue, back to the article, even with all of this revenue, the United States will not balance its budget. Because of deficit spending, government debt now amounts to more than $20 trillion. Of this, $1.3 trillion is owed to China. And $5.5 trillion is owed to the government itself, including the $3 trillion 
from for loan from us, the people, or from our Social Security Trust Fund. And at the current rate, the Congressional Budget Office predicts that the debt will amount to 150% of the gross domestic product by 2047. In other words, this just simply is insane. The Internal Revenue Service reports the voluntary compliant rate of Americans who pay their taxes is 81.7%. However, it estimates that more than five, $458 billion in legitimately owed taxes are criminally evaded each year. The, the attorney-client Panama Papers leaked here in 2015 demonstrated just how very easily wealthy individuals, including politicians from all over the world, use offshore companies to hide money from tax authorities. It is difficult for workers, the ordinary people, we, the people of the United States, whether you know we are workers or professionals or our small business owners, uh, it is difficult for us whose income taxes are withheld from their paychecks and small business owners who have to file and pay quarterly to avoid taxes. However, with the federal tax code presently consisting of 74,608 pages, it is easy for the wealthy and large corporations to rely on attorneys and the loopholes created for their benefit to avoid paying their fair share of federal taxes. Present reforms under consideration, now this is the law it passed, by, will further shift the burden of taxation to workers and small business owners. That just occurred. Writing in the fourth century before Christ, the Greek philosopher Plato said, when there is an income tax, the just man will pay more and the unjust less. In other words, those who cheat and lie don't pay taxes, and those who work hard and pay will always – nothing has changed, nor will it, unless something different is done. The Solution Following the collapse of the banking industry in 2018, proposals were made to target a special tax on financial institutions not only to raise tax revenues to help pay for the bailout, but to restrain, but to restrain the insane financial gambling that had caused the crash. Now they want to roll all that back. Taking into account the amount of stocks, bonds, commodities, currencies, and futures that are bought and sold every day, the shuffling of funds between banks, and the massive trading of over-the-counter derivatives, Trillions and trillions of dollars are being gambled in the economic casino that has little or nothing to do with the efforts of most of us who work hard, pay our bills, and, and try to go to bed with a good conscience. It does, however, have everything to do with their lives, our economy, uh, stability, and the future and happiness of our children. Many if not most, of these financial transactions escape all taxation as they are not defined as income. This is true, even though the banks are gambling with sophisticated trading software that allows them to place their high-speed bets instantaneously before their own clients and cheat their own investors and destabilize the markets. A financial transaction tax was proposed in 1972 by James Tobin, a Yale professor who won the Nobel Prize for Economics. Dr. Tobin's view that that the world economy was being disrupted by currency speculation in which money is moved around the world as bets on the fluctuations in exchange rates. He believed that the imposition of a very small tax on every currency transaction would disrupt these illegal gambling uh, gamblers while imposing a trivial burden on those legitimately engaged in foreign trade or long-term investment. Expanding on the idea of a currency speculation tax, wouldn't it be more sensible and much fairer to simply tax the movement of all money in the U.S. economy instead of a taxing personal and corporate income, not a sales tax, 
not a value-added tax, not a flat income tax, not even a speculation tax, but simply a toll, a simple toll on every single financial transaction that occurs within the economic system of our nation. Not just every time someone buys a pack of chewing gum, but every time stocks and bonds are bought and sold, every time currencies and derivatives are traded, and every time General Motors buys a new robot to replace assembly line workers, the tax is paid. In one year, this was 2012, in one year, the Chicago Board of Trade process nearly three billion contracts that were worth approximately one quadrillion in notional value. In 2013, the daily trading value of transactions at the New York Stock Exchange exceeded $169 billion, or $42.5 trillion during the year. In order to maintain liquidity requirements, banks make overnight short-term loans back and forth to each other amount, amounting to $200 billion, $200 billion every day. Every day. Or $50.4 trillion in a year. 1% of these transactions alone would amount to almost 11 trillion dollars a year. Since the working, middle, and small business classes have far fewer and much smaller financial transactions, the wealthy and the multinational corporations who spend a tremendous amount of money to avoid having any taxable income would have to pay proportionally their toll to exist on our economic highway. And, and their use of our courts and our institutions to enforce their contracts and to facilitate their profits. Why should so many of the largest corporations completely escape the payment of any taxes? It is likely that the federal government could operate of the revenues produced by a simple transaction tax of less than 5% on the movement of all money. As a result, the payment of taxes would shift from individuals, from the people, and small businesses to the large corporations and, and their financial institutions, and, and, and it would shift from the laboring poor to the wealthy elite. Envision, envision the effect of a slight touch. Every time money moves, a tiny ka in the U.S. Treasury's cash re register, which in the aggregate aggregate could quickly add up to trillions of dollars every year. How nice it would be to have Congress to first decide what the people of the United States need from their government and to then calculate what the toll tax would be to produce the revenue required to pay for it. Every year, the books could be balanced. The result would be significant. Public debt could be eliminated and the United States could finally achieve a balanced budget every year. Imagine that most people would only have to pay an annual tax rate of a few percent on their spending income because most of us spend what we earn are pretty close. Of course, the transaction tax would result in a small increase in the overall cost of goods and services that people purchase because taxes would have been paid back through the processes that produced these, these physical things. However, 
the, the toll would apply to all financial transactions, including the purchases of limousines, helicopters, and mansions by the wealthy, who rely on every single imaginary scheme to avoid having any income upon which to pay taxes. Those who enjoy luxuries would pay more for them, and those who gamble in the money markets would have to pay for their visit to the economic casino. In a regulatory sense, a universal financial toll tax would operate something like the income tax in that individuals and corporations, uh, you, you know, we can't be fools about this, uh, people would have to f prepare an annual tax report rather than as a sales tax where the revenue would be collected at the point of purchase. For most individuals, small businesses and corporations, the preparation of tax returns would be greatly simplified. A transaction tax was believed to pose impossible accounting problems when first proposed by James Tobin 40 years ago. However, computer technology now allows for the instantaneous calculation and posting of all financial transactions. Just as the income tax contributions of workers are withheld from their paychecks every week, it should be possible for the tax on corporate financial transactions be paid by the close of business every Friday, every Friday afternoon. Conclusion. The people do not have to willingly endure corporate government and unfair taxation. Those who pay the taxes must make the essential decisions about the methods of taxation and their level of payment. Otherwise, we the people live in slavery, and our freedoms are illusionary. Well, that was a little more than 280 characters. But how else can it be said? I mean, you know, that, that's an entirely, that's a very complicated subject that, that was just discussed. But, but we do need to look at these very complicated uh, situations in, in a way that that maintains the policy of the people and what what do we want and what do we need from our government that's the question and I think it is a, 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 a paramount question right now in the next few months until the election in November now I have to confess to something uh, if I if I don't confess Helen will tell the world in my work yesterday to get out the vote, and actually, I have to confess, I, the illness that uh, failed me was ongoing yesterday, so I do have that in my defense, but I forgot to vote. We always mail in our ballots, and we vote together as a family around the, the, around the kitchen table, and we generally uh, vote as a block, but this year, uh, Naomi was busy, and Helen was busy, and I was busy, and they got their votes in the mail, but I didn't, and I was going to walk up to the polls yesterday and, 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 and experience it the old-fashioned way, and, and, and last night I realized that I forgot to vote. I don't suspect that my vote would have made much of a difference, but I, I uh, anyway, that's it for the, for the day. The, uh, Things we remember are speak out, register, vote, vote, defend your rights of liberty, and protect your consent to be governed. That's it, June the 6th. Uh, I may either take the day off tomorrow or I will conclude. But this is my goal, was to do seven of these. It was going to be, you might say, a week with William, if you wanted to put it that way. But I, I wanted to be able to see what I could do instead of writing articles in books, because I'm tired of writing articles in books and going through that entire process. And if what I have to say and organize quickly in a way uh, each, uh, each morning as I have, I, I have looked at it as an argument that I would make in court. I, I was thinking and mostly and working as a lawyer in my head as I tried to organize my thoughts and discuss them with you here this week. 
but I am um, uh, going to have to reflect upon it and, and look at what I have done and decide what I'm going to do uh, uh, in communicating in the future. But I think this is pretty much it. Uh, this pretty much uh, uh, summarizes the the principles that I that I've been proposing uh, by which we govern ourselves in this country, and I think that it is pretty much all expressed at uh, in the in the in the materials that are available on the websites at usvra.us and y4vra.org are my own personal website, williamjohncox.com. And um, we continue to, 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 to struggle on, but I, I, I you know, I, I look at the doom and gloom that surrounds us, in, and, and I, you know, back here, I have news feeds going, you know, every day. I, 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 am reading the world's news and thinking about it, um, but um, I have to believe in us. If, uh, if I didn't believe in us, then what on earth, you know, would, would I be existing for? Because I believe in our children.